Now, you might remember last episode, we took an in-depth look at how the Australian sheep meat industry has repositioned lamb in the minds of Australian consumers, contributing to domestic consumption of 238,000 tonnes carcass weight per year. Well, developments on the export front have had an even larger impact. This time, Jane Drinkwater follows up at a look at the factors that have moved Australian prime lamb exports from a mere 16% of production 20 years ago to 44% today. Australia's sheep meat industry is worth over $4 billion, but 20 years ago it was a far different story. The early 90s saw the industry in crisis, so much so that players right throughout the supply chain came together in an effort to turn the industry around. We actually had a shared vision for the lamb industry, the lamb industry strategic plan. Every single player was working towards that one goal uh, and that is incredibly powerful. The first step was to seek out new market opportunities. With a large population, low lamb consumption and a preference for high value cuts, America in particular provided million dollar untapped potential. But unlike Australians, American consumers didn't view lamb as a staple. Lamb is sold around the world uh, as more a high end product. Um, a lot of food service um, sales, particularly white tablecloth restaurant sales, and it's positioned very much uh, in a way that we would, we would consider venison or crocodile or something like that. More a game meat. Increasing consumption meant not only changing the US perception of lamb from elite product to middle class everyday meat, but also changing the product itself so it was more aligned with customer needs. Marketing campaigns such as Fresh Australian Range Lamb and Easy Any Day grew consumer awareness, but meeting the growing demand required a consistent supply of lambs suited to the US market. Suddenly what we were looking for was leaner, larger lambs to fit into the marketplace over here to meet the customer's requirements and that really provided a focus uh, in breeding and also selection for lamb for this marketplace. Genetic Tools Lamb Plan and Merino Select were an important part of the industry-wide shift to the production of lambs that fit the requirements, but the challenge was on to ensure year-round supply. One of the key limits is really the seasonality that we contend with each year, um, you know, with, with winter time supply uh, being low, coinciding with the peak demand period in North America being their summertime. The continuity of supply was one of those issues where we had different production systems building in fodder crops for different production systems, uh, looking at some supplementary feeding with grain or whatever it may be, but built in with the marketing end, the forward contracts so that we could get that continuity of supply rather than a big spring flush and then no land. Meanwhile, significant steps were being taken in processing and distribution, providing pivotal advancements necessary to capture the US market. In the early 90s, there were two critical factors that coincided. One was perfecting sea freight shipment of Australian land with, a, with an adequate shelf life. And two was a major retailer like Costco got on board and featured Australian land as a category in the, in the US market. No, major retailer was really featuring Australian lamb in the way that Costco did. And they grew their, they grew the, the sales of lamb um, you know, quite significantly and showed a lot of other people in the market what could be done with Australian lamb. But it wasn't all fair sailing. Uh, we saw uh, volumes of lamb develop from somewhere around eight or 9,000 tonnes per annum and it grew pretty rapidly up to about 20,000 tonnes. That was around the time that we encountered some uh, protectionism, I suppose, from, uh, from uh, the government at that time. But the industry turned even this bump in the road to its advantage. The US imposed a restriction and tariff on our lamb into this market, a Section 201 market restriction. Uh, that also provided a great opportunity for Australian lamb, however, not only domestically, back in Australia, where we were able to build the patriotism around our lamb dish, uh, but also allowed us to really target our, our marketing activities over here to build awareness of Australian lamb and, and it really gave lamb a higher profile than what otherwise would have been able to have been achieved. 
The Australian government won the high-profile case, opening the door to increased US market penetration with the support of a whole range of additional US retailers. The sheep meat industry has come a long way since it was a low-value byproduct of wool production. Australia may no longer be riding on the sheep's back, but speak to anyone in today's industry and you'll hear the same thing. The prime lamb story is a prime success story. The greatest thing I think about producing uh, prime lamb is know that you're going to get good money at the end of it. Uh, like there are contracts out there, but with Australia's low numbers, low sheep numbers, if anybody can produce a, a, a prime lamb, whether domestically or, or for the export market, they're going to get very, very well paid. Providing Australia can produce enough lamb uh, and supply into it, that's really an unlimited market. Um, We've, we've got the potential there to build brand names in the retail sector um, to increase consumption of lamb at home on an everyday basis. Uh, and in the food service area, new cuts and new concepts in, in uh, lamb will allow the growth of that market significantly. And uh, it, we really haven't tapped into the lamb market at all in, in the US. It's not a product which is uh, consumed very much and uh, so the potential is enormous. As and well as capitalising on America's renewed interest in healthy home-cooked meals, MLA is bringing lamb to a new high-volume segment of the US market. With 14 innovative casual dining products ranging from Asian cuisine to sandwiches, lamb is lining up for a permanent place on the menu in America's family restaurants and fast food outlets. MLA is running a Design a Burger competition with a national magazine and has been presenting menu options for Australian lamb to a number of US burger chains, strategies to put lamb at the front of the American public's mind. And there's more value in end cuts and we're trying to bring that more into casual dining in the United States where the huge volumes of, of meat is. Lamb doesn't have a presence in these uh, outlets at the moment but what we're trying to do is develop lamb burgers, lamb burritos, things that Americans people see as being very uh, mainstream, they understand a burger but putting in a lamb into it gives it another dimension. I think the critical factor for all of us is that we need to grow the supply because the demand is there emerging in places like China and places in the Middle East as well as good sustained growth in mature markets like North America and Southeast Asian cities. I mean, the demand is there. I think the processing capacity is there. And what we're hoping for is we can see the farming sector continue to grow the supply.